Hello guys, welcome to another episode where we talk about choice behaviors and preference relations. So in this episode, I will try to um, uh, argue about a, a very important approach uh, the economists are using and unfortunately uh, misunderstood by many others who are not really familiar with the technical details or the details of the economic theory, the as if approach. So a lot of, uh, you know, some people uh, sort of criticize economics assumptions, which of course is, uh, uh, well, fine. Um, so one of the uh, main critical assumptions is that the economists are making very strong assumptions on rationality of individuals or the decision makers. Um, so do we make any such assumptions like the, uh, the individual is rational? Well, first of all, I don't know what they mean by rational individual or rational decision making. Okay, I just mention you uh, what we mean by a rationalizable choice behavior. But normally, we do not make the assumption that uh, in economics, we do not make the assumption that individuals are rational, uh, like they're super... Uh, computers. Well, in some, you know, like game theory, for example, we do make that assumption, to be honest, uh, but not always. Uh, what, so, and to be more specific, what we say, an individual's choice behavior is rationalizable, all right? At least, I mean, even if I say something like this, this behavior or this individual is, let's assume this individual is rational, by which I actually mean that his choice behavior is rationalizable. That's what we mean, all right? So what does that mean? And so here's the uh, as if approach kicks in, all right? Maybe the decision maker is, is, is doing something super stupid, all right? But the thing is, as an outsider, as an economist, when I look at his behavior, all right, I... I, 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 I may see a perfectly rational, uh, you know, consistent, predictable pattern of behavior, all right? And to me, that is a rationalizable behavior. But as an economist, I don't ask my individual as, why did you choose this? What was your motivation or what was your intention? Uh, what, what did you feel about all these choices? So these are not the questions economists ask. A psychologist, for example, or sociologist may ask and, and may be very important questions to ask in such environments. But as an economist, what I do care is purely the actions taken from this individual. So I have a very simple example. So suppose that I have an individual, let's call him Bob. All right, so Bob is a nice guy and uh, there are, he, he is about to choose a college, all right? And uh, let's suppose that his college choice is going to determine his lifelong employment status, all right? Uh, that's not completely true in many environments, obviously, but for simplification, let's suppose so. And Bob indeed thinks that being a doctor, let's call it A, is definitely better for him than being a lawyer and then being, a, I don't know, an accountant. All right, so accountant, so this is a doctor um, and this is a lawyer and this is an accountant. All right, so this is what he thinks, let's suppose. All right, so um, for, to make the example a bit more interesting, let's suppose that Bob's family, his mother and father, also thinks that for him being a doctor is definitely much better. His mom is dreaming about his son being a doctor and his father same. And so his family also thinks that, you know, being a doctor for him, so, you know, choosing A is better than choosing B versus choosing C. All right, let's suppose. But for some reason, all right, for some reason, uh, Bob is having a problem with his parents. I mean, it's some period where he is, uh, he's, he's destructive, all right? He, he's, he's not happy with the current situation or with his parents for some reason. And so an unfortunate timing 
uh, all those you know negative things happen at the time when Bob is about to make a decision. All right, and for it's 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 weird, I know, but for some reason, let's suppose that we can ask the Bob's uh, uh, choices in under circumstances. Like, hey Bob, what would you pick if you were able to choose between A and B only. All right, so being accountant is out of the picture because that university, that department is going to definitely reject you, let's say. So what would you choose, Bob? All right, and let's suppose he, he says B, all right? Uh, exactly opposite because as, as I said, so he wants to be destructive, all right? His state of mind is such that he doesn't want to make his family happy, all right? Instead, although he knows that A is better than B for him, he want to choose something that is going to make his parents unhappy. All right, let's suppose. I mean, I don't think it's uh, totally uh, inappropriate and or, uh, uh, you know, unrealistic example. You know, all of us had, you know, problems, issues with our parents. And so we may have done such uh, uh, things. So we also keep asking him, all right, but now let's, let's make it a, a decision when only law degree and accountant degree is, is available. So being a doctor, a health school is, is out of picture. So I know in, in, in Canada and in many other countries, you have to go to law school or, 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 or health uh, uh, after, you know, graduating from college. So all these ABCs may not be the... Uh, uh, alternatives uh, at the same time, all right? But in many other countries, you know, uh, you have to decide uh, whether to go to medical school or law school or, you know, the business school at the age of 17 or 18. So assume that this is an environment where you have to make, uh, you know, one decision uh, at the same time. So we ask him to choose between B and C, all right? And he goes for C. Remember, he's uh, his incentive, his, his idea is to make his parents unhappy with his choice. And then we ask him the following question, sort of the standard questionnaire we gave him. What would you pick if it was between A and C? And he also answers it as C. Okay, so as an economist, I have no idea what Bob prefers. And I had no idea what he's feeling towards his parents or towards anybody else. So I don't know what's happening in his mind, all right? Again, a psychologist may be worried about his, his state of mind, but as an economist, I don't know. And to be honest, I don't care about all that. What I do care is his choice behavior, all right? And so he tells me, not only tells me, but chooses, let's suppose, uh, he behaves this fashion. So from this information, I would drive that. Look, given that A and B were available, he, 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 he was so determined to choose B. So that means B should be at least as good as A for this guy. When B and C were available, well, he decided to go for C. So C should be at least as good as B. And when A and C were available, he was happy to go with C. And so C should be at least as good as A. So therefore, uh, there is actually a ranking, all right, a, a, a binary relation, which puts B over A, all right, C over B, all right, so... I have to leave a space here. So C over B, B over A, and C over A. So you know what? There is a, a, a complete, because I can compare any two alternatives, transitive, all right? Uh, why is that transitive? Well, because C, B, and B, A implies C, A. I mean, these, not implies, but these all three are true at the same time. So transitivity is a true argument in this framework. So it is transitive and it is complete. So what does that mean? That means this is a preference relation. So Bob, Bob's choice behavior is rationalizable because there exists a complete transitive and reflexive. Reflexivity is, is purely technical in this environment. There exists a preference relation that represents the Bob's uh, 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 choice behavior. So if I, instead of uh, asking Bob, if I sort of 
write down a computer program and tell this program, look, whatever alternative is available, choose the best according to this ranking, all right? So if the computer was given uh, all CBA as an option, he's gonna go for C, he's gonna go for B, B whenever BA is uh, sort of given, and whenever CA was given, he's gonna go for C, all right? So what, what, what does that mean? That means uh, I can actually uh, rationalize this behavior, all right? Well, in fact, as I told you the, uh, the, the background of the story, this is completely insane behavior for Bob. I mean, he is purely destructive. And so in no sense, this is a rational behavior. But as I said, as an economist, we don't know this side of the story. And so we look at the story as if Bob is maximizing or, or choosing to maximize some preference relation. All right, so that is what we mean by as if approach, okay? And so when we say a behavior is rationalizable or by mistake, when we say an individual is rational, we don't really mean rational in the sense that the psychologist maybe or sociologist maybe uh, would, would, would define a ration, rational behavior, but what we actually mean is that the behavior can be rationalizable or rationalized, all right? I hope that is, uh, that makes this idea of rationality in economic theory clearer.